ready? Y'all get ready? Yes, you get Y'all ready. Shout out to all my tea sippers out there. We are gathered here today to sip some tea, honey. So make sure you guys have your teacups ready because you already know this tea is what? Piping hot. Hey, you guys. I hope you guys are doing good today. So I want to come on here and talk about all this mess that's going on on social media. If you guys do not know, there was an active shooting last night in the country of New Zealand. So this story right now is viral. It's trending all over Twitter and on social media. President Trump, Joe Biden, Barack Obama, they've all had something to say about the shooting. So what ended up happening is that basically they're saying that it's a 28-year-old white supremacist nationalist out there in New Zealand. He went into a mosque um, that was filled with hundreds of worshipers, and he basically walked in there and just started shooting, just indiscriminately, randomly shot men, women, children. 49 people died and 49 people were injured. So right now, PewDiePie is trending on social media. Candace Owens is trending. I don't know the shooter's name. They have not released his name thus far. But what they're saying is that basically he released a 74-page manifesto. But what's even more disturbing from everything I've been researching this morning, I really feel like this man was trolling the internet. He definitely knew what he was doing. So first, when he goes into the church, they've been taking the videos down from social media, but I watched the video. Um, A lot of people were posting it from New Zealand and things like that. But basically, the man ends up live streaming this massacre via Facebook. So he goes on to Facebook, you see him grabbing his AK-47s and everything else, and he's getting ready to walk into the church and do this dastardous deed. But before he goes in there, he tells everybody to make sure to subscribe to PewDiePie. And as you guys all know, PewDiePie is one of the biggest people on this platform. He has over 89.3 million subscribers. And that's one of his slogans where people are just like, you know, subscribe to PewDiePie, being that he has so many subscribers. And so right now, PewDiePie is trending. Um, Of course, for the most part, from what I was seeing, nobody's blaming him. We know that PewDiePie has been involved in a bunch of racist scandals in the past and stuff like that. But even with that being said, I do not blame blame him for the shooting of some man in New Zealand. That's unfair to put the blame on him because the man shouted out his name. Um, So PewDiePie released a statement on social media, and this is what PewDiePie had to say. PewDiePie says, Just heard the news of the devastating reports from New Zealand's Christ Church. I feel absolutely sickened having my name uttered by this person. My heart and my thoughts go to... My heart and my thoughts go out to the victims, families, and everyone affected by this tragedy. So that was retweeted over 438,000 times. So for the most part, people are not dragging PewDiePie. They're not blaming PewDiePie for this. Now, on top of PewDiePie's name being mentioned, um, he also mentioned Candace Owens in his manifesto, and he also mentioned President Trump. So, of course, people are having a field day with this. They're also blaming Trump, saying, you know, if it wasn't for him becoming president, all, all this craziness in the world wouldn't be happening. Um, Candace Owens was very upset about her name being mentioned as well. So Candace Owens is now responding. So I'm going to go ahead and read to you guys this brief snippet um, from his manifesto that supposedly appeared online. So it says here, from where did you receive research slash develop your beliefs? He says, the internet, of course, you will not find the truth anywhere else. Then they go on to ask him, is there a particular person that radicalized you the most? And he says, the person that influenced me above all was Candace Owens. Each time she spoke, I was stunned by her insights, her own views, helped me push further and further into the belief of violence over meekness. Though I will have to disavow some of her beliefs, the extreme actions she calls for are too much even for my taste. So... Candace Owens and a lot of people feel like, you know what, that's not real. He really didn't write that. This is coming from the Democrats. This is coming from people trying to make her look bad. If you don't know who Candace Owens is, she's the one that Kanye West shouted out. She's a proud Republican. She takes up for Trump. Her and Kanye have been working on some projects together, and then they ended up getting into it, so they're no longer really cool. But this is what Candace Owens had to say. So she says, ha ha, oh my God, you racist leftists are taking your racism and crazy to a whole new level. Ha ha. Black people don't have to be Democrats now means mass shooting in New Zealand. This clearly won't stick, but damn if I won't grow. Black's it highlighting your sheer desperation. Then she says, LOL, fact, I've never created any content exposing my views on the Second Amendment or Islam. The left pretending that I inspired a mass massacre in New Zealand because I believe black America can do without government handouts is the reachiest reach of all reaches, LOL. 
Then she goes on to say, to be cleared, we played the Candace is Hitler game. We played the Candace is anti-rape victims game. If the media attempts this Candace inspired a mass shooting in New Zealand bit, they better all lawyer the fuck up. I will go full Covington Catholic lawsuit. Try me. So Candace is really upset. She's not buying it. And, and like I said, that's the only snippet I found. I haven't been able to find the entire 74 page manifesto, even though some people have read it. Some of the news outlets have posted it. But I definitely feel like this man was definitely trolling for attention. He named a lot of, you know, high profile Americans, um, even though PewDiePie is in um, Sweden. But he named a lot of like Internet you know, viral people to help kind of spread this message across. And this entire situation is really sickening. Um, the Prime Minister of New Zealand, they've come out and they've spoken about this. It's all over the news. I'm going to go ahead and show you guys some of these news clips. Go ahead and check this out, and I'm going to come back with the rest of my commentary. This is CNN Breaking News. Welcome back to our continuing coverage of the attacks in Christchurch, New Zealand. Now, police in New Zealand are urging people to stay off the streets and to avoid mosques in the coming hours after mass shootings at two mosques in the city of Christchurch. At least 49 people are dead, many others seriously wounded. This happened around 1.40 in the afternoon local time, the busiest day of the week for many mosques when worshipers gather for Friday prayers. One man who witnessed a shooting at Dean's Avenue told reporters how he and others hid under cars and tried to jump the fence to escape. We heard, you know, the firing, and it was from the main entrance, the main entrance of the building. And then everybody just ran toward the back doors just to save themselves. We saw many injured, bullets in arms and bombs and, you know, everywhere. One woman was right there. She was just lying on the road. And I don't know how many people died. CNN's Matt Rivers is tracking developments. He joins us again. And Matt, in the last 30 minutes, you heard it live here on CNN, updates from the New Zealand police commissioner about the suspects and the death toll. Yeah, absolutely. We're getting, you know, this information coming in slowly but surely, Christy. Uh, we heard from the, the prime minister herself uh, a bit before we heard from the police commissioner, and the facts keep getting worse. Uh, frankly, 49 people now confirmed dead, 41 of whom, according to the police commissioner, were killed at a mosque on Dean's Avenue in Christchurch, seven more killed at the mosque on Linwood. Avenue and of the 40 people that were being treated at a hospital uh, in Christchurch, one of them uh, has died so far. Given, though, uh, the amount of people in that hospital, uh, we could very well see this death toll continue to rise. We just don't know, uh, but it is uh, already a horrific number. 49 people uh, have been killed so far. As for the people uh, who have committed uh, these crimes, according to the police commissioner, one man, a white male in his late 20s, as he was described to the media, has been charged charged with murder. He will appear likely in court tomorrow morning uh, in New Zealand. Three others throughout the day today have been uh, apprehended as a part of this investigation, according to the police commissioner. One of those people, uh, although all three uh, were uh, carrying firearms or some sort of weapon uh, and were in the vicinity of these attacks, it appears that one of the three had nothing to do with the incident, uh, and police are still talking to the other two people uh, who uh, to try and figure out uh, what they were doing in the area uh, with weapons at the time. According to the police, no other threats at this moment. They're not actively looking for anyone else, but they stressed uh, that they are very much maintaining vigilance, not only in Christchurch, but around the country. They're also still working on uh, uh, disarming an IED uh, that was found on one of the vehicles uh, that was used in these attacks. Initially, we were told that there were IEDs on multiple vehicles, but police clarified that statement in this latest press conference. Chris saying that there were two IEDs found on one of the vehicles. One of them has been disarmed already. They are working on doing the other one. Matt, warnings have been issued to members of the Muslim community in the wake of these attacks. Mm -hmm. What kind of warnings have police issued to, to the Islamic community in Christchurch and across New Zealand? 
I mean, they're basically saying hunker down. They're basically saying uh, don't go visit one another, stay at home, keep doors locked, uh, try and avoid the threat that could come with any sort of copycat attack. Now, again, police are not saying uh, that they are anticipating other attacks, but they say it's never safe to assume anything. And, and so they are warning not only the Muslim community, but New Zealand at large to stay at home tonight. And the Prime Minister of New Zealand, Jacinda Ardern, she has been providing updates throughout the day in addition to providing key information about these shootings, she has also been trying to console a nation that has been reeling in the back of these sickening attacks. What has been her message? Uh, her message is that this is not New Zealand, that this is not the country uh, that has had a history of welcoming immigrants uh, recently. I mean, the, this is a country uh, with an immigration policy that accepts people from around the world that accepts members of the Muslim community and encourages them to live there and to raise their families. Uh, this is, the, you know, the words that she said is that these attack that the attacker or attackers, uh, depending on how this shakes out, uh, may have chosen New Zealand, uh, but that New Zealand utterly rejects these attacks. That's that's where her words in a press conference, you could see the emotion in her face. You could see her struggling with this, as everyone uh, in New Zealand likely is at this point. Um, but but her message is that this is not who we are and that they should people should be compassionate to one another tonight, that people should bond together uh, and that they should not let New Zealand's uh, image, not let the, the, the character of the people of New Zealand uh, be, be tarnished uh, by these attacks, that this is not who New Zealand is. Yeah, this is a moment of extreme crisis, loss, and a moment for New Zealand to come together. Matt Rivers reporting, thank you. This is one of New Zealand's darkest days. Clearly what has happened here is an extraordinary and unprecedented act of violence. Many of those who will have been directly affected by this shooting uh, may be migrants to New Zealand. They may even be refugees here. They have chosen to make New Zealand their home and it is their home. They are us. The person who has perpetuated this violence against us is not. They have no place in New Zealand. There is no place in New Zealand for such acts of extreme and unprecedented violence, which is, it is clear this act was. For now, my thoughts, and I'm sure the thoughts of all New Zealanders, are with those who have been affected and also with nice the guy on the other side who was on the other side. He put three people in his car, in his car and took them to hospital. And the, the guy on the street, he was trying to ruin his wife. Oh, the one I heard, and the other guy I could see was, he was in bad shape, but I couldn't get to him because that was where directly the gunfire was coming from. And, um, and the guy I was compressing, he, um, he was trying to ring his wife, and I managed to get it, and I answered the phone, and I said to her, your husband's been shot outside the mosque. I said, and don't come here to Dean's Ave, you won't get through, but please go to the hospital, wait for him. And then I kept talking to him and telling him that she was at the hospital waiting and he wasn't to give up. And yeah, we just kept pressure on and did the best we could for him until we got him some help. Yeah, and, the, and in the meantime, the poor guy across the road passed away. So you guys just saw those news clips. So like I said, this entire situation is very sad that so many innocent Muslims lost their lives, especially, you know, just to a crazy madman. And for him to basically film this and post it via Facebook, you know, it's really scary that so many crazy people have access to the Internet. They have access to just going live. I have been saying this for the past few months that they really need to restrict live. You have a lot of people who are attention whores, who are willing to do anything as long as they can give eyeballs on them. I really think there should be certain restrictions, certain privileges for people to go live. Everybody and their mama should not have that option because now we're seeing a bunch of monkey see, monkey do. You know, a few years ago, you had a lot of people committing suicide on live. Now you have somebody literally going into a mosque and just blowing innocent people away. And I think the saddest part of all this is not only the people who died, but the last words of the first victim before he walked into the church, the, um, the Muslim man says to him, hello, brother. And he didn't realize that that man's intention was to blow his life away. And as soon as he said, hello, brother, he was shot and killed right there on the spot. So, you know, this entire situation is just heart-wrenching. It's really sad, you know, to see what's going on in this world, the hate 
the animosity, you know, the um, just the things that start on social media, the back and forth, either you're with this or you're against this, the way that we're not able to just have dialogue, the racism, the sexism, you know, all the isms that are coming, you know what I'm saying, because people have the anonymity of the internet. And I think, you know, with him doing this and with so many nations getting involved and speaking on the situation, best believe there's going to be a lot of things rolling down the pipeline. They're going to start cleaning up house. They're going to use this as a way to restrict the internet to restrict access to certain things um there definitely will be hell to pay on sites like youtube and facebook and twitter and things like that and they're going to basically reference it to what this man did so it's going to be very interesting to watch how all of this plays out but this is just really disturbing and it's really sad all this propaganda and drama that's going on you know and i see a whole bunch of the back and forth about people calling him a terrorist versus an extremist people making excuses for white shooters versus muslim Muslim or black shooters at the end of the day all of this regardless of who the shooter is regardless of the race of the victims all of this stuff is messed up unnecessary and uncalled for life is too short be happy that you woke up today tell the people that you care and you love about that you love them let them know how you feel today because tomorrow is never guaranteed it doesn't matter if you're at a mosque if you're at a church a movie theater a grocery store a mall we live in a world now where you just have to pray that you make it back home safe. Anyways, y'all, let's go ahead and get the discussion popping. Go ahead and leave a comment. All right, deuces.